these questions and then you know and answer them of course and then we'll discuss them in a bit so this is your first test today <laughs> so i guess you guys can see the poll now whatever i've said so far um just sort of conceptually think about what i've said and um you know, sort of look at these questions and see if you, what you feel about the answers and we'll discuss obviously in just two to three minutes once everybody's gotten a chance. Can everybody see the polls? If somebody can just put in the chat that you can, because I, it says that people can. Okay, perfect, super. So take your time. There's five questions. Great, so there's some answers coming in. Think about, you know, just what we've been talking about over the last two and a half classes, especially what I said in the last half an hour or so. Super, lots of answers coming in. This is nice. And I think hopefully what this poll does is sort of takes it takes things away from you know i always feel we can sort of get too bogged down in our codes and analysis and everything and while it's important to be robust uh it should never come at the expense of um sort of just a conceptual understanding of things so hopefully some of this can help us think about that great lots of answers coming in we'll just give it a couple of more minutes so people can just answer. I hope people like these polls because I, I really like making them, <laughs> but I also feel like I might sound like a teacher. <laughs> but yeah, I'm assuming people like them because people answer. <laughs> okay, two more minutes, everyone, to get in your answers. Oh, one more minute, rather. And then we can discuss. Thirty seconds more. Some answers are coming in. Super. Almost done with all everyone. Great. We'll give it another fifteen seconds. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to end the poll now, guys, and we can sort of discuss the answer. So I'm ending it now. And I will share the results with you guys. And I guess you can see the results and I will just sort of run through them in my presentation, right? So question one was, uh, one second, I'm just going to put the polls inside. Uh, so question one was, Observer one will, all, and guys again, feel free to stop me or comment on the chat box or even you know, speak up if you think you uh, didn't understand or disagree with me most importantly. Uh, so yeah, the question was, observer one will always have a higher detection probability than observer two. Yes, no, or maybe. So the answer is no. Uh, most of you did say no. The reason why it's no is observer will, will, will not always, I mean, Maybe they will have uh, a higher detection probability than observer two. Maybe even mostly they will have because of evasion, uh, evasive movement of uh, amulets, but not always. And hence the answer. Oh. The answer is no. Question two is if most groups are recaptured, then detection probability for both groups is indeed similar. And as we sort of went through the example uh, previously, the answer is indeed yes. You know, if uh, most groups are recaptured, uh, means, you know, both observer one and observer two are seeing similar uh, groups and group sizes. So indeed their uh, detection probability will be pretty similar. Question three was, if observer one sees more groups than observer two, uh, who has a lower detection probability? 
I mean, without even going into the analysis or whatever, if you just think about this, it sort of makes sense that, you know, if observer one is seeing more, that he or she or they will have a higher and hence observer two will have a lower detection probability, right? Question four was higher recaptures means population estimate will be similar to the milliment count. As I said previously as well, that it is very likely that if our uh, data set has a lot of recaptures, or all recaptures, for instance, you know, the estimate will be very, very similar to the minimal count. And that makes sense, right? Because the whole idea of capture recapture is that, you know, if you, uh, you know, what is captured first might not be recaptured, and what is not captured first might be captured by the second observer. And it's the difference between those two captures that you help to estimate. So yes, the answer to this is yes. Question five was two populations with similar abundances will have similar. So this is a tricky question because the answer to this actually is maybe, but not necessarily. I mean, for instance, two populations with similar abundances can have very, very different group sizes. You know, last, uh, uh, in last class we saw two Uriel populations, the animal that's in the background right here. Um, that had very similar abundances. I mean, there was one was 331, I think, and the other was 307 or something. So pretty similar abundances, but their group sizes were very, very different. One uh, population had fewer groups that were much, much bigger in number. The other had a lot of groups that were much smaller in number. So yes, but there can be an instance where two populations have very, very similar abundances and also similar group sizes. And hence, the answer is not a no, because that is a possibility, but not necessarily, it's highly unlikely. Great, I think that's that's great. So, sorry, uh, I'm just going to move on now from Double Observer to the other sort of ungulates and uh, discussing them. So if people have any questions about Double Observer and analysis, uh, please do ask. I'm going to very quickly spend about five minutes to talk about other ungulates, such as what you see here, the mosque here. These are ungulates that are not necessarily uh, similar to the most of the Caprinia that we spoke about in the sense that they're not really, they're more cryptic, you know, they're not really visible uh, in the way, let's say, an Argali or an Ibex or a Blue Sheep would be for double observer surveys. They're mostly living in these more forested areas or they're nocturnal. So what do you do to them? And again, I'm not at all an expert in this. And in fact, there's other people who publish papers on species like this in, on this very call. So please feel free to add to what I say. But this is just one method that we've been trying in India to estimate populations of musk deer that I want to share with you guys. So it's estimating populations for other ungulates such as musk deer, goral, uh, Himalayan sirau, for instance. So this is called the random encounter model, or in short, the REM. Um, it's uh, it was first described by Marcus Rowcliffe and his colleagues in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. The whole idea about the random encounter model is that you're going to use camera traps, uh, which are placed in a, uh, in a landscape with an assumption that in that landscape, the species of interest, for instance, for us, Muscular, uh, has a random movement between those camera traps. So let's say, you know, if you have, let's say, a square and cameras in the middle, the whole assumption is that the movement between Camera, uh, camera stations is movement, uh, is uh, random by that musk deer, or the population of musk deer. And what you basically do is you place these cameras and you the data you collect are pictures of musk deer. And the way to get the density, which is D, is this, you know, relatively straightforward equation. And what are the inputs? You take Y, uh, which is up here, so, the, so basically density is equals to y divided by t multiplied by uh, pi over v into r brackets 2 plus, uh, this is degrees in radian, not in degrees, you know, it's angle in radian, rather. The whole thing multiplied by g. So what is y? y is the number of independent photographic events of that species. And this is data you can get from the camera tab, right? So you can define what an event is, you know, maybe an event is one, uh, you know, for well, musk deer cutting the camera once, and even if the musk deer takes 10 photos, 
uh, you know, once it cuts the camera uh, at that point of time, that's still one event. And then, you know, half an hour later, if it cuts it again, that's a second event. So you calculate how many times that, that has happened across your landscape. And that's why. T is camera tapping effort. This is, is what you would calculate uh, in terms of the days. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it's days or, yeah, I, I have to check this, but it's camera tapping effect, uh, effort. How much effort have you put uh, in that camera tapping exercise? V is the average daily movement when active of that species. So obviously the first thing that comes to mind when you read this is you might need telemetry data, for instance, you know, to know okay, how much muscular walks, which we don't always have. It's, it's okay because we don't have to get too bogged down by this. Either one can parameter, parameterize V with uh, literature data. Maybe there are other studies on other species of musk that have similar natural history that we can use, or maybe some captive studies. And if that's not possible at all, we can do one of two things. We can maybe even sort of use our understanding of musk natural history understanding to parameterize this, or there might be other species that are very, very similar to musk deer when we have a compelling case to say that, you know, their V might be similar to a musk deer. So there's many different ways to do it. So that's average daily movement when active. R is the detection distance, this R. Uh, this is actually a camera related parameter. So your camera that you put for us, it was a Reconyx hyperfire. You know, it'll tell you what's the detection distance uh, from the camera. So, you know, is it 10 meters, 15 meters, 500 meters? I mean, 500 is obviously not possible, but so that's, the camera will tell you that. That's the camera angle, you know, the angle uh, of the photo. Again, this is something that the camera will tell you. It's in radians. And G is the average group size of, uh, of that species. So for a singular species of CG, will be one, but maybe, you know, several, for instance, are these uh, total like groups uh, across the Himalayas. They're sometimes found in groups of 11, 12. So what's the average group size? Because obviously all of this is for a single individual in a way. So that's how one can actually study abundance and hence, oh, sorry, uh, densities of, um, of uh, species like musk or goral and, and things like that. So that's, that's for these species. And yeah, if you do have questions, please, please ask. 